So uh, we are already uh, seen this uh, screen. So the introduction about JavaScript has a bit to data data type side. So I already told about the primitive and non-primitive, right? So now we in the stage of undefined variables. How the undefined variables works? So this is a browser. Uh, in general, browser have multiple tabs. Uh, for elements, is nothing but uh, it completely depends. Uh, completely showcase what are the HTML tags we have, what are the style spot uh, in this page. So this this will be elements. Console is nothing but directly uh, communicate with JavaScript. For example, I am typing alert, and it will show the alert pop up here. That will interact. So this is a JavaScript command, and it interact with the browser. So now come back to the point. What is undefined? For example, I am doing a, and I click. Enter here, it will show a is not defined. So this a's value is undefined. Why? Because we are not declare this variable. We are not assign anything to the variable, but we are trying to use that variable. So this is something a problem with the browser. So browser is not able to understand what is a what is a, what is stored in the a, what type of a. So a browser not don't know aware about what is a, right? For example, now I a is equal to 10. Now I print a. Then it will show what what the value is available for you. So at this time a is not undefined. So because we have defined a is equal to 10, and also we can check the what is the data type of a. So for the type of a, we can see it's a number, right? We already see that uh, we have the different different types of uh, data types. So one of the type is number. Uh, here I'm declaring a string is equal to We just print a C, and again I call the type of type of is nothing but a default function which is also uh, defined from the JavaScript side. Browser can easily understand the function. Uh, in whatever the whatever the values we put in inside the function parameter, that will validate and it will return to us the what is the type type of parameter. So here I am putting string, and it will tell us it's a string. Even though we can directly Can directly type inside that as a string file, so kind of this as a sentence. Again, it will tell the string. As I told you, string is a group of uh, different characters. Uh, it may be a single character, or it may be a word, or it may be a sentence, or it may be a big paragraph. You see anything? Everything under a single data type that's called string. And boolean is, boolean is nothing but, uh, for example, uh, I just declared a variable called bool, and I define it as a true. Right and here, if if boolean is true, then alert, then run the alert command. Right, so it will show the alert. So uh, whenever we are trying to run any kind of conditional statements, at that time we need some condition. In the straightforward thing, we can pass boolean flags. If that if the boolean value is true, then the condition will execute. If the boolean value is false, then that won't end. Uh, that won't happen. Uh, for example, if I change boolean as false, and again in the if condition, it won't do nothing. It just return undefined. Why? Because if condition is fail, we don't need write. Uh, we are not writing any else condition or exception handling. So that's what it read. It just returning undefined. So we already uh, seen about undefined null. Null is a new data type which is not available in the other uh, program languages. Null is a part of object. So, uh, if the object is empty, then that's called null. If the array is empty, that's called null. So it's just straightforward. Null is empty. I'm jumping to the next screen. So declaration of variables. So here, uh, where the global variable as ten. And I am writing a function, um, or print something. And inside that, I just put console for globe. So as I already told, globe is nothing but global variable, right? And I call this function print. Okay. So to run this function, I need to use node. And declarations. When we execute this, 
the the print function will call and inside the print we can call the globe and what the, what is stored inside the globe that is string so it will print here in the similar manner inside the print i have declaring let b is equal to 10 uh, or 12 what i told um, i just uh, print here the globe outside the function globe as well as the b so uh, the scope is nothing but from here to here the scope of this let uh, let declaration for where, where it's nothing but it's a global variable we can access anywhere even inside the function or outside the out of the function so let execute this one so we are getting the reference error b is not defined but we are defined the b but the problem is we are accessing the b variable outside the function or because this is out of the scope so if we are if we cut it and put it here and if we rerun this thing it will execute the global variable first then the scope variable so in javascript nature how will it will execute right so it will start executing from the top to bottom and it always looking to the calling method after that only it will looking to the declare, uh, declaration or definition anything so for example it will start from here and it will see there is one function but there is not called now and it will jump to the line number 8 and it will see we need to console globe globe is a global variable so we need to print that that's what that number 10 first printed and after that it will jump into line number 11 it will look into print there is a function and it will look into the definition of that and it will jump into the definition and after that it will see there is a one scope variable and we need to console and it will look into the variable called b whether that is a part of the scope or not it find that within the scope after that's what it printed the second one hope you understood uh, these two things and constant constant variables nothing but i just declare const in the global variable and uh, uh, it just uh, mark like that so i just make it as 30 and i can declare mark anywhere now but i can't redefine mark like mark is equal to 20 right so here we are declare also get defining the value for a particular constant variable and what i try to do uh, i try to override that mark is a constant variable so constant what is constant variable we can define at only at only one time the entire application but we can't able to modify that particular variable that's the problem here so i just run here so what it will tell it will tell type error assignment to constant variable we can't assign any value for the constant variables we can able to declare but we can't able to override or assign a new value to the the, uh, the to the constant variable okay uh, back to the uh, the presentation so hope you all are uh, able to understand the different type of uh, declarations so where i just repeat that where is a global variable we can able to modify we can able to uh, get the variable anywhere across the page across the application across the script and let it is nothing but it's just a scope level variable we can able to uh, modify we can able to access within the scope we can able to do any process out of the uh, out of the scope that is a there is a simple dif uh, differentiation between where and let and const const we can define as a global variable but the problem is we can able to modify the constant variable we can able to use anywhere even within the scope or out of the scope Conditional statement. So everybody knows conditional statements. We have uh, uh, two things. One is switch case, and another one is if conditions. So if conditions have multiple parts, we can write if else or just if, or we can write nested if. So hope you will. Everybody are uh, aware about that. Lot of programming languages, even the college times, we see in the conditional statements. So only thing we need to pass the conditions. If the condition is satisfied, then the if will execute. 
if the condition is filed then it will automatically jump into else what about switch switch have multiple cases but if you have only one case if that or this or that but switch cases have multiple cases let me show the structure of that it is a switch like this so we can write a number of cases so like this we can write multiple cases so we need to pass the particular value this value uh, matches with which type of cases that will you execute else it won't execute it will execute the default one that's the thing if it is a if condition there is a only two things this or that the condition is satisfied then the if condition will execute if that's not satisfied it will jump into else port and when we talking about if and else if at that time it will first check the if condition then if that's not satisfied then it will like, uh, jump into else if like this so if condition it will check the condition here then it will jump into else when we talking about else if at that time we can write another condition so a else if like this so first it will, first it will check the condition here if not that if that that's not work then it will go into else if then again we can write multiple else condition else if condition if anything is not work then finally it will jump into else condition same to switch case so else is nothing but a default uh, thing to execute and uh, if else if everything will be a kind of different different cases with the different conditions so depends upon the situation we need to take a call uh, which type of uh, statements we can we need to use back to the slide in for we have three different fors in the javascript right so uh, in general everybody using normal for for loop it is called like this so we need to use for and the initialization port and uh, this one for the condition and this one for the increment state so if it pass any of the array here and it will start working on that for example i'm passing this array here and index will be increase and it will console the particular element so what i do console dot log of element right so what is the expectation from this uh, for loop it should be print one by one what are the data available for array okay let me execute this one okay the variable name is deeper okay so when we execute this one so the, what uh, it will directly jump into the for and it will look so there is a array or not so yes we have the array and it will start index from the zero the array is uh, array is indexed always start from the zero so what will what it will do it will look into array of zero array of zero is one array of one is two array of two is three and array of four so we'll keep on the indexing and it will find the particular index value so array of 0 is 1 and it will store into element variable and after that it will console that so by that way only and after that it will go back in the increment part it will increase the index and will keep on executing the statements within the for loop by that way only it will print like this okay so is that working with a string yes of course for example, I just replace an array here. Instead of array, we are putting students and save it and re-execute the same thing. It will print first names, then C, then the the big stand, the big sentence, right? By the by this manner, we can able to understood uh, array is nothing but we can store similar kind of database, uh, data types, or we can store different data type of data sets. For example, here I am using diff which means a different kind of data, one comma, uh, some strings, uh, some booleans, some storing undefined and put it in null. So these are the five primitive data types. Uh, the first one is numbers, string, boolean, and undefined, then null. So these are the primitive data types, right? So what I do, I'm going to print these things 
so whether this is working or not if that's work i we hope um, for command can able to run across all different type of data data sets so save it and rerun the file it executes right so it's uh, it it print number strings and boolean flag and uh, undefined and null here also we can do type of we all know very well type of is a default function we can able to find the what is the data type of the particular element so save it and rerun the thing it will show number string boolean undefined object as i told object uh, null is a part of object if object is empty then it will call as null that's what it's showing here as a object okay hope you all understood uh, how the for is working here and we have the different kind of fors as well so this is for the normal for and we have the for each for each is nothing but it's a short and for loop instead of writing this kind of uh, declaration and loopings and increment part condition part we don't need this much of uh, efforts right we we have some uh, some data we know very well about the data we want to print the data one by one that's all that's the expectation we don't need any kind of the complex structure so javascript give for each so it will simplify the things so for example i took this students and put it here and it will look into the students array and it will fetch one by one elements so we can just put console dot block of elements right i just command here right this is a, a simple structure for for each and rerun the thing the same result what we seen in the for this one right so uh, in this manner javascript simplify the things we don't need to write a huge amount of lines uh, to solve the problems and another thing another for is also there so we have the for in so for in nothing, nothing but it will help us to get the get the values from the object not from the array so in general we uh, everybody knows about for for will execute the sequence of data are uh, store in the immediate indexes in this case only for will execute but how it will help to the object so first of all what is object so object is nothing but, uh, looking like this it will open with a curly braces and inside that that structure will be a key and it will the value this is a actual object so where is that object uh, support other kind of data types yes of course for example here i have the key called number and i define the value number and here a string is a key and this side some kind of text and here the boolean we can define as a true go with false and if it is undefined we can go with undefined and as we should null we can go with null so if we print this one if we print that it will execute it will tell us so there is a number and it will show the different color, kind of colors uh, why because i am using a uh, visual studio code uh, by default that will show like this but yes object can able to support different kind of data uh, data types what are the primitive data types that obviously support with object so back to the topic so we are seeing for so now we are in the for in for in nothing but it will work as a uh, it will look into the particular object whether object have the keys or not so what type of keys we have like that so here we need to pause instead of object we need to pause our object so just renaming this one right and uh, back to this one 
and here we need to put console log of element so what it will need to do it should be print uh, all the values value this number this text instead of the keys so that's that's what the expectation okay somewhere so here we go um so first of all we are printing the object after that we are we are running the for loop to print the values instead of keys so here the first value and second value and keep on printing until the last key so in sometimes most of the applications go with json structure json structure is nothing but object type so at that time we need to uh, we need to just print the values we are the user don't need what what is the key of that right at that time we need to use for loop in so this is the one type of for here and the final one is a for of for of is nothing but uh, again it have some iterator and the object uh, let's say i directly jump into 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma 4 i directly define the array here instead of a variable and i am printing console dot iterator and remove it save it go back and execute yes of course it's also gives the same result but depends upon the situation we need to use which kind of for loop we need that's all some sometimes we need to use oil but because oil have the different cases so oil so oil look like this if we put directly while of true it will execute infinity times it, it never ever stop until unless you put break command here inside at, at any point at anywhere you need to put the break point if you are using condition as true default true else you can put a greater than 10 like that at some point definitely if a is 11 so if a is uh, 9 uh, if this if this command is failed then obviously while loop will clear 11 is greater than 10 yes it will work but if it is 9 9 greater than 10 no so obviously while loop is not work right so sometimes uh, if you want to run something some kind of functionalities to the infinity times at that time we need to use the direct command like this while true we can pass directly true as a condition and it never ever fails it should execute until and unless we run the command called break so we already seen the break command in the switch case the same purpose we are using here as well similarly do while do while is nothing but uh, there are difference between while and do while is do while will execute at least one time but while will execute if the condition is satisfied if the condition is not satisfied while never ever works but if do while even though while loop condition is not satisfied but it should work at least one times for example do it will do here look like this okay and so that's all from the state uh, looping statements and in the function side everybody knows about function functions are the um, different kind of operations we can write inside the functions it can be able to perform different type of tasks De uh, depends upon the task we are we are going to write the functions so mostly Functions are uh, mostly the developers write the function for the reusabilities. So, for example, uh, here we are going to write a function called add. So, inside that, uh, I'm going to use let a equal to 10. It's a small, uh, it's a LKG level uh, uh, addition. So, then a plus b. So, here if you call this function add what it will do it will print some of these two things right so everybody know that
Okay, so here when we run this uh, file, so we are calling the add function, and we are not any any values here, but the empty parameters. But inside that we have the scope level variables a, b, and c. We have the hard coder value for a and b, and we are calculating that, and we return that. Uh, we are just printing the particular uh, variable. So instead of that, this is a hard code function. This is never makes sense uh, like this. There is no purpose for function, right? So we can do like this. Then what is the need of the function, right? So for that, in general, we we are going to calculate multiple uh, numbers, but we don't need to write again and again a plus b a plus b like that. For that, what we need to do, we we need to remove these strings and we can pause the values like this, and we can put ten comma twenty, and we can do with uh, some. Pick numbers as well. It may be a small number or big number. The operation is same. The function uh, will do, will will keep on performing. So here we go. Here we go. So first it will execute with 10 and 20. It will give back the result, and it will work with the big big two numbers, and it will give back to the results. So this is called the reusability. So we have the function and definition. There is no dependent variable here. Everything, oh sorry, everything is a dependent variable. There is no independent variables. If it is an independent variable, then uh, th that should be a hard coded one. But here we are using the function. We are not, uh, uh, we are not hard coded anything. We just pass two values. What are, uh, what is the requirement? I'm going to add something. Add two where numbers. It, it may be a small number or it may be a float as well. So it may be 10.12. At 20.78, and again running the thing. Yes, it will work because in JavaScript, it's a group of uh, data type, right? Number is not just a number, it's just a whole number. It's just a float. It may be a double or it may be a whole number. We can say anything. So like this, if we uh, depends upon the functional uh, functional or execution, we can write your definition within the function. But keep in your mind. Function should always be a reusable things. We we don't we never ever write any constants or any hard coded values inside the function. Okay. Back to the things. Ah, uh, in general functions we write like this, but in JavaScript we have ECMAScript. So that's called ES6, ES7. Ah, uh, now the latest version came in 2020. So we have the uh, ECMAScript as well within the JavaScript. For example, so if you want to write the same function, I just copy this function. I'm going to write for minus. At that time, we don't need to write this kind of function. It's a it's just a old way. So in the ECMAScript, we can write. It's a constant function. We are defining only one time. We are not overwrite this function. So because this function's definition is default. The user going to use, or the developer going to reuse the function. That's all. So it's a constant function, and is equal to. This is a input value, so which means the parameters. So what are the things we are uh, we are receiving from the user end that will go inside this like this, whatever here like this, and we are putting the arrow and within the in the bracket. We have the definition. So this is called arrow function. So uh, in React JS, most of the time we are uh, writing arrow functions because React is by defaultly support ES6 and ES8. So uh, this is uh, this is called arrow function. This is not a big deal from the default function. Uh, it also executes the same way, but in most of the time, most of the time we can't write the uh, normal default function. For example, so here I am declaring one array and one comma two comma three comma four comma five and six. So now I want to print only the even numbers, right? So uh, what we need to do, we can write functions or we can write the conditions. If condition we can do, but Uh, and in some time we need to print very quick manner. At that time, in array have 
multiple options there are multiple properties within the array this everything copy bin entries every fill this all are prototypes so uh, you can uh, self learn these things so what is array i already explained so what are the prototypes there how can we use uh, those prototypes into the array so for this i'm using map and inside the map i get the first element you can say element and inside that so if element model if element to equal to equal to zero then it should return something then as so here we can see so map is a function map is a default function we don't we no need to write these kind of functions or this kind of function we can write a short and arrow functions here this also arrow function this also arrow function but it's pretty much simpler than this so within that it will check so element is uh, is even or not if it is even then it will return true if it is false it return false that's all if you want exact value then we can do filter with the same condition it will return the particular values so we are using arrow function but we are calling the default method inside the array so that's what i already told so array this is array variable so these are the prototypes we have the different kind of prototypes we can uh, for example if you want to find the particular index this index number 3 right uh, 3 is a value what is index of 3 if you want to find that then you can use find index if you find index and if element is equal to equal to 3 right if element is equal to equal to 3 then it will return the particular index so if it return it will return return the index of that value number 3 how because it's 3 e3 uh sorry it's 2 it started from 0 0 and it's 1 and it's 2 that's what it written 2 so in, in a similar manner there is multiple prototypes in array uh just to check that and do some uh, just play with that our different kind of prototypes in your end and back to the slides and closure closure is a very important concept so whenever you are attending in the interviews or whenever you are trying to uh, uh performing some encapsulation kind of activities at that time closure is very important so here is a closure example so uh, here i did in the outer function called greet inside that i have the scope level variable called name and i defined as john and i writing the inner function that's called display name the purpose of that function is going to say hi okay so the definition is a written hi and the name and we return the display so written is nothing but what are the data we are uh, what are the performance what are the action we have perform perform within the function that everything will return to the parent function it's called written so uh, this is example so we are writing the outer function and this is a inner function so inner function going to play the major role but we we need to do data encapsulation as well as the data should be persist there for that what we are going to do we are calling the outer function not the inner function right so here you can see the line number 20 we are calling the outer function and store it to so, uh, normal variable normal uh, uh, constant variable and we called as g1 and here we are calling g1 g1 what is g1 g1 is nothing but a function it it should return as a function and if you call g1 of within the bracket at that time it it will return the five value so uh keep watching closely so if we call just g1 it will return the definition of the function if we call g1 
along with the parameter at that time it will start executing the inner function and it will get back the value 